Hey everybody, Mo Bunnell here, your host at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. I'm with Sural Papon today. He's my go-to expert for how to work. That sounds like a crazy concept. How, don't we all know how to work? We're not taught how to work. We're not, not taught how to, how to think about our lives strategically at a work level. We're not taught how to bake in time to do the things that we really want to do. We're not taught how to balance work and life. Searle is CEO and founder of Work Smarter, Live Better, and that's what they teach high-end professionals how to do. We have some overlap in our client base. We've met because of that. And I personally lean, I personally lean on Searle for advice on how I can get more productive, productive and how I can work smarter, live better, better. In this particular episode, we talked about how Searle thinks about uh, business development. What was the moment, moment that he realized it was important? It goes all the way back to his college days. And as we get into this episode, stick through his personal story in the beginning because we get some real meaty content about how you can have the right mindset, mindset about grabbing control of your time and really practical in three steps how you can get the big things done that you want to get done, how you can plan for those, and using that strategic mindset, how you can actually get them done on a weekly and daily basis. If you use our system of MIT's most important things, I think you're really going to like this because it's aligned, but it sort of supersized the idea into the rest of your life. So I think you're going to love this episode. It's really good. Now, if you want our weekly newsletter on that I, I write myself, every single week on giving a little tip on how you can get better at business development, how you can get great at growth, just head over to growbigplaybook.com, sign up there, and you'll start getting the newsletters every single week. I put a lot of time into these and a lot of people get them and, they, and with the feedback we get is phenomenal. So growbigplaybook.com is where you get that. All right, here is Soro Papon. Hey everybody, it's Mo Bunnell. I'm your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue, and I am just absolutely thrilled to have Searle Papon. And I hope I said that right, Searle. I was, I was working really hard. Perfect. Out. Okay, good. Perfect. <laughs> he is CEO and founder of Work Smarter, Live Better. I lean on Searle personally for how I do things like manage my counter, balance time, things like that. So I'm pleased, I'm just pleased it's punch to have you on the show, Searle. So uh, first question, when, and we, as you know, we use the same same question set for everybody in the season. It's so fun to see different perspectives. For you, tell me the moment when you realized growth was great, that you needed to somehow put some emphasis or shoulder into business development kind of activities or growth activities. So it's interesting because I've always been naturally quite interested in business development. Um, when I was fresh from my uh, MBA uh, in France, with uh, two other friends, we created our own business. So we started like young entrepreneur and uh, uh, we had Gilles who was really good into the strategy and the finance, he took care of this. We had Mathieu who was really good into the technology, took care of this. And they said like, Cyril, just go and sell it. And by the way, if you can't sell it, we don't have a business. And so I was just thrown in the bath very, very early with no experience. And so I've always had a, an affiliation, uh, an interest for business development, for relationship building. Um, I think what I realized with Time Mo is not, I've always known it was very important, but I've realized, I'm not saying how bad I was, but how much I had to learn. Mm. And that's what I, that, that was the interesting thing for me. I thought like, hey, let's go and talk and I'm gonna sell it. And oh my God, I was so green. Yeah, so interesting. Okay, so for the for everybody that's that's watching or listening, Searle has one of the most in some of the most impactful training around how to balance your schedule. You know that his company name says it all: work smarter, live better. How do you get the balance you want? And I and I just love his program. So I w I think that also part of your business development journey, I would guess, is to to have some impact on the world. So I loved your initial story, but as you play it through time till today. How do you look at business development going forward? How do you align it with the impact you want to have? Go, go a little bit deeper, more in the, in the realm of exactly what you're thinking about BD right now. Yeah, it's really interesting because I love, I love the word, uh, the, the, the fact you use the word impact. And, and this is a, 
uh, one of the key word when you talk about everything for me in life. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sometimes I ask, uh, and I have, when we work, we work with leaders around the world. And so our clients are big companies, top leaders in their teams, uh, you know, super smart people, uh, but they're super busy and they get swamped with email, with things to do and so on. They're the people we work with. And we take them through a journey that lasts about three, four months, completely changing the way they work. They were what I call their, their work habits. And I was interviewed once because I, I, I wrote this book that became a bestseller and I was interviewed one and someone asked me, hey Cyril, if you only had one principle to share, if, if there's only one thing you have to share, which is on a th- as, is exactly the same question I would ask, you've got so much richness more in what you do and I'm a big fan. So I help you for you know how you manage your calendar. You're, you're my go-to man for, I've got, uh, we're on the other side of the world yeah. and we spend some time, so much time and I'm like, hey Mo, how you do this and so on. So you're the leading expert for me in that. And, um, but if someone asked me in my field, if you only had one advice to give and the advice I would give would be prioritized by impact. And so I love your word about impact. And for me, whether it's in your business life, whether it's in a personal life, is really about impact. And so you ask about what how business development is very important for me. Um, my first client, that was about 16 years ago, uh, if not more, my first client was a big bank in Australia. And I was working with a, a management team and I took this management team through a journey that lasted three to four months. And at the end of the journey, I asked them and say, hey, what, what was the impact for you? What, what did you get from this journey? And I will never forget Marnie. She stood up and she said, Cyril, the impact for me is my desk is clean. Remembering that 15 years ago, we had lots of papers everywhere. I used to take photos of people's desk. It was so fun. Um, my inbox, I see the white space at the end of every day, which has never been for me for years. I'm on top of my priority. I know this year I will achieve my KPIs. And then Moshi said something really interesting. She said, but that's not the big win for me. And I was well, that sounds already pretty good. What's the big win for you? And she says, you ch- yeah, the big win for me is I sleep at night. I used to have a notepad and a pen on my bedside table because I was waking up in the middle of the night thinking, I need to do this. I forgot to do this. And so my brain was constantly in overdrive. She said, for the first time in a long time, I sleep at night. You've changed my life. And you ask me what is really for me the... Why should I focus on business development? It's because when you have something as powerful as this, and I'm so passionate, and my passion has never decreased and increased actually over the last 15 years. When you get this kind of feedback, you're saying, I have to share that with the people that needs it. That's my passion for business development because business development for me is about serving. So sorry for my long on this one, but I'm so, when you work with a team and you see the impact and you have people, and I have that all the time, say, in a way, Mo, we trick people in what we do. People think when we work with them that it's about their file, their email, their calendar, their priority and so on. It is and it's not. That's why it's called work smarter, live better. Is because when you change your ways of working, you completely change your life. And that's why business development is very important for me because I don't see it as business development. I see it as bringing this service to the people that needs it. That's perfect. That's why it's so important. Well, and, and that's, so, that's so impactful on its own because everybody who watches or listens to this show, they've got some service, people need it, and they're in the business of transforming people's lives in one way or another. Even if you're a, you're a high stakes litico- litigator with a, with a chemical background that, that because you're a chemical engineer and you're able to solve really, really tough um, matters and cases because of your, your chemical and your litigation experience, man, that, that's an impact you want to have on the world. So business development is important for everybody that's, a, that's an expert because they've got people they need to help. And if those people don't know about them, they can't help them. So 
Let, I want to go that. deeper though on on your impact because one of the, the the feedback we get on the show for the most the most impactful episodes are ones that get super practical. So I actually want to go deeper on this idea of prioritized by impact, which was your number one thing. So I want you to go rapid fire. Give give our audience so many ideas right in a row, and I maybe I can jump in and help too because you've helped me a lot. But when you think about prioritized by impact, what are the tactical things, so the practical things that people could do right away? to start prioritizing for their for impact for the to help their long-term self great so there I, i'm going to talk about two things i'm going to talk about the mind shift and i'm going to talk about tactical Perfect. because you need to start with the mind shift probably some of your audience and some of the listeners would have listened to, heard about this great book called the seven habits of highly effective people by stephen covey now a bestseller in the world of productivity and effectiveness now, the organization behind Stephen Covey is called Franklin Covey, and they've made some research about how people prioritize. And what most people do is they prioritize because of deadline. What most people do is they look at the list and say, hey, this is due tonight. This I've got three weeks to do, so I need to start with the one due tonight. <coughs> and then they interviewed high performers, really successful in any kind of field. And what they found is quite different. High performer prioritized by impact. The key question you need to have in the back of your mind, always in my view, the four important words. Now, the four words mode that most people have in the back of their mind is when is it due? So you look at this and when is it due? I'm going to prioritize this way. High performer asks themselves four other words. And the four other words they are discussed is what impact long term. Now, let's talk about tactical because that's the great idea. How do I apply that? We have an approach that we call Think Quarterly, Plan Weekly, Act Daily. It's very simple. Think Quarterly, Plan Weekly, Act Daily. Think Quarterly. Great that you have a, a, and you and your business have a long-term strategy. You know where you're going. Hey, what is my plan for being there in the next five years? But I'm a great fan of the quarterly planning. The only planning is too long. If I tell you, hey, this is what we need to achieve in a year of time, pretty relaxed. I've got plenty of time. No, no, no. Think strategy on the quarterly basis. How do you apply that? Every quarter you look at where you want to go long term and every quarter you choose two to three priorities. Not five, not ten. If everything is important, Mo, nothing is important. How do you choose your priority? Forward. What impact long term? So you sit down and you ask yourself, I know where I'm going. One, what's going to have the most impact long term that become my priority that's number one number two plan weekly it's a really really important tempo that's why I suggest people go on wslb.com the website I, is this one thing I share is how to do a super simple weekly plan every week you look at your priority and you ask yourself what do I need to do next week to progress my priority it's a simple question and you start doing a to-do list of all what you have to do. And then on top of that, you can look at everything else that you have to do. So people, we're all expert at doing to-do lists. People have loved for years. I mean, you know, whether it's pen and paper, we still a lot of people are using every, you know, every day I start, I write my to-do list, whether it's a nap, whether it's whatever, one note that people are using, people love doing to-do list. What you need to do is to look at your to-do list and you need to look at your time available. So you do a to-do list with how much time I need to do everything and you get a number called total needed. Hey, I need this amount of hours to do what I have to do. Then you go in your calendar and you look at how much time you have available and you get another number called total available. And then you compare how much time I need, how much time I have available. And then you cry because it never match. <laughs> how do you decide what to do, what not to do? Four words, Mo. What impact long term? That's performance. Act daily. You've organized your time, you block thing, and so on. But then, the only thing I can guarantee you about crisis and unexpected is they will arrive. They will be every day, unexpected, non planned, crisis, firefighting. You get this email. Hey, Cyril, I, uh, I, we need to do this. But tonight is super urgent and so on. Can you help? And you look at this and say, 
I could do the perfect answer in half an hour. Four words, Mo. What impact long term? Not that huge. Sorry for my French. I'm going to do a bad, I was going to say another word, answer in five minutes. Because I'd rather keep those 25 for something else that's going to have much more impact. That's my tactical, practical way of managing this. This is perfect. And I think um, what's in interesting about that for our audience, as you know, it's so aligned with the MIT process that, you know, that we talk about every week. Pick three business dev development activities that are either going to move an opportunity forward, a bit shorter term, move a relationship forward a bit longer term, and just picking three per week, week after week over week, 150 a year. And it's so nicely aligned with your think quarterly, plan weekly, act daily. So let's finish this episode with this. This was really meaty. Really loved it, Cyril. This is perfect. Where should people go to get that weekly planner? So um, we have a website. Uh, it's called WSLB.com for work smarter, leave better.com. So on WSLB.com, uh, they a few things that hopefully can help. One is this weekly plan, free download, just jump. It's a really step-by-step. -step. One thing which is really important to understand of how my team and I work is the DNA of our business is practical. People don't learn because of big ideas. People are learn because like step one, step two, step three. So I'm a super down. Just to give you an idea, Mo, the first thing I do when I train executive, I make them tidy their desk and their computer and they're in box. The number one step, right? You can't work in a pig's tail. So I'm Mr. Sh and I don't do it, they do it with me, step by step, paper by paper, email by email, until it's organized. So we are super practical. So one, they can go on wslb.com to download this wiki plan. And also there's, uh, over the years, I've been asked to record some small video for my clients. A lot of the clients that I train, when we finish the training, say, hey, so we need more. We, we'd like to keep, you know, on, on going. So every two weeks, I released a small video, which is one tip. And I've been doing that for years. And so there's a lot of little small video on so many different tips that you can find, again, on WSLB.com. Well, folks, go to WSLB.com. I've gone there. I've downloaded the weekly planner. I get uh, Searle's tips on email every week, watch the videos, and absolutely love them. So, Searle, this was fantastic. Thanks for being on the show. Audience, don't forget, follow, subscribe, set up those notifications, all the classic stuff that, you know, by law, we podcasters have to say at the end of an episode, or, you know, there's all kinds of violations. But uh, make sure you do all that stuff because... In all seriousness, we've got four more episodes coming up with Searle, and I can guarantee they're going to be fantastic. Searle, thanks for being on Real Relationships, Real Revenue. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Hey, everybody. Mo Bunnell here, your host at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. Hey, if you didn't catch it, we just recorded an episode with Searle, Searle Papon, and it was absolutely fantastic. In the last episode, if you didn't catch it, go back and check it out because we talked about specifically how Searle, CEO and founder of Work Smarter, Live Better, talks about how you can plan for your weeks, your quarters, your weeks, your days, in a way that you are going to be able to work smarter, live better, which is the name of this company. So, Searle, this episode is going to cover new content. Beginning question, what is your personal definition of business development? It's interesting because it really evolved over the years. Um, I started with selling, you know, making revenue. That was when I was younger and like this was the selling things, making deals. That was the thing. And then the more I went, the more I realized that selling is like serving in my view. Um, I would even say selling is like giving. And it completely changed my perspective of sales. And so now I'm really clear, um, I'm clear on the who, who are the people that I love serving. So I work with, I mean, for me, it's t b b leaders of large company and their teams, super smart people, the high performer, but who completely swamp and that I can help. I'm very clear on what I provide and it's completely changing the way they work, completely challenging and changing the way they work habits so they can one perform and second feel much more in control. Um, and I'm really clear therefore on who I don't want to serve, who I'm not the right person to serve. And so therefore 
I'm very open in being in a business meeting and say, I don't think I'm the right person for you. And actually, I know someone who'd be much better than you. And so it's really about service and bringing value. That's, that's, that's been my big change. Yeah. And uh, as I've seen you in action, your content is just so powerful. It, it draws people into you. You know, you have that weekly video that you put out. You've got the weekly planner on your website, all kinds of different value ads that let you meet people. When, when you think about that idea of, of serving or giving, specifically what are habits you have that you make sure that you're doing a little bit of those kind of things all the time so that you can design an attractive buying process, meet the people you want, shepherd people through a, a buying process, things like that. What do you do? The first thing Emo, is about clarity is a bit super clear on who, as I mentioned, who are the people you want to serve and, uh, and, and what you bring to them. And so, and, and there's a notion of, passion i love what i do and i find it it's quite infectious because yep. people feel it so i was in a meeting yesterday with a big uh, a big insurance company here in australia and one's one of their leader and i i almost has to excuse myself how excited i get when because the the she and her team is are perfect i know that what we do would really make a big difference to their life and i get really excited yep. uh, and and she got excited and it was a really lovely meeting um, so it's start with clarity. Um, there's also a process behind that. And what I mean by the process is whenever, because of the book, Work Smarter, Live Better, which to my surprise became a bestseller, I, uh, we are quite often contacted by a company and say, hey, read the book, heard about you, can, you know, should we work? And I'm super clear on uh, before I, I say yes, I always uh, I ask a few questions by email, a qualification question, and then I give them probably 10, 15 minutes minute on the phone. And it's called my triage meeting. And I'm really true to myself. The only aim of this meeting is a triage for both of us. Mm. If you were calling me, Mo, I'll say, hey, let's have a 15 minute meeting and let's talk about, are we right for each other? Tell me what you're after. Tell me why. Tell me the context and so on. And my aim is, it's not to sell at all. My aim is to say, hey, I don't think we're right for each other, but I might have, I, and I want to serve. And I say, I know someone who's probably much better for this. Speak to Mo, speak to John, speak to Sue. Or to say, look, it looks like there's a good fit. Let's have a second meeting where we'll go much more in depth. And that's a way of serving. I don't want to waste their time and I want to make sure I'm the right person to serve to them. And my organization is the right organization. And so this constantly in my mind. And even when I work with clients, it's constantly thinking, how, how can you bring the best value? I have a, 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 a program that I have developed for the last 16 years. The book has been a bestseller. I'm working now with some of the largest companies in the world. It's just amazing. I started in Australia. Now, most of my clients are around the world. Mo, I still spend, I don't know, six, seven hours per week. And I employ someone to spend the same amount of time every week to ask yourself, how can we bring better value? That's the question. How can we have more impact? How can we serve better? So whether it's in our sales approach, whether it's in our development, I call that the IP development, um, it's always about how can we have more impact and serve better? This is the, the key of the center in my view. Well, we've shared uh, for everybody, Cyril is sort of the person that I share my time with, that we, we very, have a very transparent relationship. So, sir, we have a monthly meeting that well, I'm saying to the audience, you know, we have a monthly meeting, <laughs> but we have a monthly meeting. We share our time. We share how much you spend in time here. Where are you spending time there? How can we help each other? And it's just really great like to have an accountability partner that you have that level of transparency. Cyril's not afraid to get in my grill. I'm not afraid to get in your grill. I never have to, but you know, but it's fun to compare notes with specificity of how we spend time. It's really interesting. So I so my point with that audience is I think it's really helpful to have somebody that's doing similar things from you in a non-competitive way, but but that you can you can learn from, you can both learn from each other and you share what you're doing to the level of like the number of hours per week you spend on different activities. I think it's powerful. People think that learning is something they do in, uh, at university and when they finish university is finished. I completely disagree with this. And nationally, life is so interesting. There's so much to learn. And so I'm very grateful to have in my life people like you 
where we can bounce ideas and serve both of us and help each other. And I've really tried over the years to surround myself with great mentors, great groups, great training, great books, learning, just constantly learning. So completely yep. resonate with what you just said, Mo. Well, and you know, it's funny. I was going to ask you a different question around that triage meeting, but let's park that. I do want to ask that later. Let's go a little bit further down this line of thinking around how do you set these kind of things up? Because I, I think this is really valuable for the audience. You know, I've got sort of two relationships like what we're talking about. One's with you. And for everybody, for the audience, what we've done is we've turned the default on. So what Cyril and I have done is we worked with our assistants. We set up monthly meetings at very specific times. It's not easy because I'm in the East Coast, U.S., you're in Australia. But we found this time where it's, you know, late my time one day, it's early morning the next day, your time. We set all those up. But the key audience members and listeners and watchers is that we don't randomly like get together from time to time. We've set these up every month throughout the year. They're already on the calendar. They're in the diary. And then every time as that date approaches, um, we're both gearing up for, oh, man, what questions do I want to ask the other person? What data can we share? I want to share what, what, I've, what I need to cut from my life that's not going well. I need to tell you what I'm focused on next. And that interaction is really powerful. The other group that I've got, so I'd be interested on in these two ways of doing it. The other group I've got is a mastermind group that a friend of mine started. And it's a bunch of business owners that are non-competitive, but but have that are doing very similar things. And there's in, in the common core of all those people is everybody is a net giver, meaning every person is like trying to give more than they take all the time. And when you pull people together like that, that are achieving great things and that all are doing things a little bit differently. Everybody's a little head in one area and a little behind another as they look at their peer group. And then we get together a couple times a year, typically in person, big offsite, day and a half kind of thing with the big cocktail party at night. And man, is it just a blast. I, I, I take away so much from that. And I think both methods are interesting. One's like really deep dive, very transparent with longitudinal conversations that last a long time. That's me and you. That's got benefits. And this sort of burst of ideas kind of day and a half with a big, big group of people like 12 people is interesting, too. So think, you know, comment on that. So what, what's your thinking about accountability, getting these ideas, surrounding yourself with with really amazing people like that? It's funny because this is something if I had to advise myself about how I started this business, I would say I should have done that much better, much quicker Me and too. much earlier. Me too. No, definitely. It would have saved me years. And I love your logic about surrounding with people who want to give. I mean, I love our interaction when we have this monthly meeting because, like, quite often is one of us, you know, we start something and one of us is giving, giving, and the other one's like, uh, you've given me so much, now I need to give you. So it's yeah. really quite a weird conversation because it's not at all like, hey, I need that, I need that, I need that. So you say, how, how can I help, how can I help, how can I help? Yeah. And then the other person's like, Hang on a minute. We've just spent 40 minutes just, you know, helping me. I need to, you know, we've got 20 minutes left. I need to help you. So, hey, Cyril, or hey, Mo, how can I help you? And I love that. I would say there's a few things for me that are quite important. One is those one-on-one, very valuable. Find people that uh, are, are playing in the same field as you, at the same level of, as you, or a very similar level, but also have the same kind of mindset, uh, yeah. you know, I love your mindset, Mo. I think you're a real giver. Uh, you're a real passionate person. You're also a very family man. You know, there's a lot of tick, 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 tick here. We got yep. we share very simple values, yep. and you're very you're a giver, and I really love that, and and I resonate really well with that. I'm part of a group called Thought Leader, uh, which is a, a group of people who are speaker, trainer, and uh, and the same. We we gather uh, each other once a month and discuss, and it's so valuable. Um, I surround myself with great mind. What do I mean? Every morning, I block half an hour to learn. That's the first thing I do in my morning after meditation. Every morning, I block half an hour to learn. Read a book, look at lecture. I've got so many books to read. I mean, this when you start reading, I have so many great learning there. And then I also train myself. If I hear about a great training, I'll do it. I want to do it, and yeah, it takes time, yes, but it's this constant growth. So I completely resonate with this. Yeah, yeah. and boy, what's neat about those two methods, the people don't have to do, 
you don't have to do both. I like both, but you could just do the one-on-one. -on -one. You could just do the mastermind depending on what you want to do. But either way, the defaults are on. You know, when I think about ours, we've got the, we've got the monthly meetings. They're stacked up forever. On the 12-ish person, 12 person mastermind, the default is on. We know we're going to meet in Breckenridge every July. and The email goes out, and then we try to meet at my house in the fall. The email goes out. We go back and forth. Sometimes we invite a few extra people that aren't in the core because you know others couldn't make it. But the default is on that twice a year we're going to be together, for me and you, and, every month. That's important to turn and, the default on, I think. Yeah, and Mo, the, 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 the principle behind that, which is really important, is... I have a, when we, when I work with a leadership team uh, that I make them do something called the ideal week and the ideal week is look at what your week looks like when it's ideal. Okay. And a lot of uh, executives said to me at the beginning, it's impossible. There's nothing like an ideal week. You don't understand my world. And I say, I know it's impossible, but it doesn't mean that you can't think about it and tend to it. If you start from a blank page, all the, sorry, urgency, unexpected, and so on will fill up your day. So I have a simple principle. And what most people do is they let their day be a thing by all the, it's called the sand, pebble, and waters, the little things. And then they wonder why they, and they end up working on the big ticket item, the big priority, either late at night, on weekend, or not at all. Yep. And I say reverse engineer this. We are going to design an ideal week. The first thing we're going to put in here in this ideal week is your personal time. The first thing I make them do. Time with your family. Time for your health. Time for your self-development. That's number one. Second thing, I make them protect her every day some time for thinking, for key priorities. Time with themselves. Then we protect time for planning once a week. Now, we might only protect doing this 40% of the calendar. There's still 60%. But what we're saying is a big mind shift. We're saying to Mr. Urgent. We may think to Mr. Others. We may think to Mr. Unexpected. I give you access to my calendar, but you only have access to 60%. You don't have access to 100%. So, and so those things... Those meeting with this group model, mm -hmm. those one on one, those time for yourself to learn, that should be the first thing protected as a recurrent meeting with yourself. Let me repeat, as a recurrent meeting with yourself forever. 100%. I love it. I love it. And when people do those things, they become those high performers that you talked about in the prior episode that I highly recommend everybody go back and watch and listen to. So, Searle, perfect. Great episode. Let's wrap it up. Where should people go to learn more about you and work smarter, live better? I think the best place is the website. It's wslb.com. So it's worksmarterlivebetter.com. And uh, on the website, they can find a few things. There's the wiki plan, such an important time once a week when you plan your week. Yep. Um, they can find lots of small videos, short videos, that I record every two weeks about, and I've been doing that for years, so there's quite a few, about small, very practical, I'm, I'm Mr. Practical, very practical thing they can do. Um, so I think WSLB.com is probably the best way to, um, to, to, to get more. Yeah, perfect. Well, well, and I love that weekly planner worksheet and I sign up and get your videos. So it's a high recommend to the audience. So go to WSLB.com and sign up there, everybody. All right, everybody that's watching or listening, make sure you turn on those notifications, subscribe, follow whatever app you're using, because we got three more media videos in or audio, which are, wherever you get your podcasts from, there's three more episodes coming up with Searle. Searle, thanks for being on the show. Absolute pleasure. Hey everybody, Mo Bunnell here, your host at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. This is the third of five episodes that I'm doing with Cyril Papon. He is founder and CEO of Work Smarter, Live Better, somebody I look up to as my expert on how to plan my time, plan my priorities, and think like that, things like that. So, Cyril, this is a fun, uh, this is a fun question because I don't, I don't know where you're going to go with it, and I'm, I'm just so good, so fun to ask. You read the Snowball System. I've read Work Smarter, Live Better, your book. We've mashed them up and, you know, I don't even countless phone calls and Zoom meetings and things like that. So when you think back to Snowball, 
what's your favorite science step and story? And then maybe maybe I can maybe I can think about work smarter, live better, and we'll just mash up our two bucks and we can like flatter each other. How about that? <laughs> I love it. I love it. And by the way, I love your book because it's it's got a few ingredients which are very important for me. It's got expertise. Uh, you know, I can see how many years you've been living, dreaming, and working that. Um, it's got your real expertise. It's got passion, but it's also very practical. Um, yep. So when you you know asking this question just like that, there's a few things that come to my mind. One is I really love how the mindset that you put in the overall book, and the mindset for me is from selling to helping. Yep, and it's such an important mindset. And you know a lot of people see business open selling as a dirty things, and I think it's a beautiful things. You're helping the world with something of value to the right people. Now, I, I'm very clear. I, I walk away from business very often because I don't think I'm the right person to serve them. And I'd rather they get served to the right person. Yep. And, but when I find someone and I think I can really help, it gets me really excited to serve this person. And so I love the mentality that you have all through the book that be proud of business open, be excited because you bring value, you're serving people who really needs it. And that's yep. a beautiful thing to do. Um, I love also when uh, you, your, your focus on developing raving fan. And I wish I had learned that many, many years ago where, uh, you know, it's always about getting this new deal and so on. And then you tend to forget the people that you've worked with. And it, it reminded me of an advice of, um, I think it's what Alan Weiss who read this, uh, who also wrote a book about consulting and selling in the consulting world. And he was very similar to you. So he was talking about, well, be, there's a few key people that you need to build relationship and they'll bring you this revenue and you also enjoy. So in my world now, I'm really conscious. I call that my top 150. There's only 50 people in that list at the moment. They're the people who are my raving fans who are, I, whenever they call, whenever they ask, and I try to, there's no bring value bring value bring value i don't care about revenue yeah. i don't care it's just people that i really enjoy so i was in uh, so i live in australia i was in uh, uh england in over christmas because my son lives in england um in brighton and uh one of the top executive of one of the biggest finance world in the world he's in the top 10 is one of the, the, the one of them and he happened to be at brighton at the same time and he's super busy but we still managed to catch up for a breakfast we didn't talk business at all. It was just a pleasure of seeing him, of relating with him. And then in the end, he said, oh, Cyril, by the way, can you just do that? You know, I'd love you to work on this one and so on. The business side was just one minute. The yep. rest, it was just bring value, discussing, helping, and, and sharing in relationship. And they're the people that give me energy to work with. So I love your logic about raving fan. Um, I love your logic about the ideal client. Uh, and you talk about be very clear about who you want to serve, who are you there, who you love to serve. And I think there's a very strong link between performance and joy. And, uh, and, and there's some people that I'm getting excited to actually deal with. And when they call me to work again, I'm like, I'm, I had a, one of the clients that I've been working for. She was part of a, a very, one of the largest back in Australia. Uh, and uh, she just moved. She moved to one of the biggest retailer in Australia, and uh, and she called me and like, oh, so I've got a team. I really want you to work. I am so excited to working with her, not because of the business, because I'm really excited to work with her. So it's, it's just pleasure and joy. Um, and then there was something that you said in the book that I've never thought about that really triggers some thinking. You said people value what they help to create. Yeah. And I thought that is really powerful. And then I reflected on some of my biggest success and I could see the trend here. When you move from the, I'm the expert and I sell you and you just do what I'm doing and just tell you to do too. Look, I've got some expertise, but you also have some expertise about your business, your people. Let's work together and there come out even better solution. Wow, uh, and you were so right in this. Is. So I'm just there's a few ideas that come to my mind straight away, but there's so many gold nuggets in your book. It was so helpful. Well, this is fun. Let's go back and forth on those a couple, th a couple, th a little bit. And I actually wrote down three things I love from Work Smarter, Live Better. So we'll circle around back on that. I think one of the things, if I, 
if I think about mindset, I from going from selling to helping, the words you use, and of course we've used it, used it too. If there's one thing somebody can have, it's that. Everything goes downstream from that. But if somebody walks into one of our sessions, and it's the first thing we hit out right out of the gate in our growth training is you've got to have the right mindset, you know, go from selling to helping. But if for some reason somebody didn't have that and couldn't attend our trainings, if they didn't have that mindset shift, they could have sales goals, they could have quota, they could have originations they need to hit, revenue credits, whatever your firm calls it. But if they have this bias against the idea of the, if they have the bad version of selling in their mind, as opposed to helping, they'll never get there ever. So that mindset has got to be number one. So did your thoughts just on that is that it's interesting. You said that as your first thing, um, it, what, what's your view on, on why that is the first thing, um, what somebody can do to get over this hump, things like that. Because I think that's one of the, it, it goes far beyond business development. It goes far beyond business mode. For mm. me, that's one of the key fundamental of living. I love the quote from Churchill. The secret of living is giving. The secret of living is giving. And once you understand that, your world completely changes. Whether it's in business development, whether it's in your relationship with others, whether it's everything that you do. Now, some people are more natural. I mean, my wife, uh, TK, Tony Kim, is a natural giver. She's a carer. She's a giver. She's just born like that. And so she just like always think about others before thinking about herself. So some people are very good naturally at this. Some people like me. I was a bit more, more, more selfish when I started and I recognize it. And it was just like business block burn. I need to make my quarter. Exactly what you're saying. Yep. And when I matured and changed my mentality and it had nothing to do with business development. I really relate to that in business development. But for me, it became a philosophy of life that I'd mature. I don't know if it's because of, I don't know, maturity, learning it from the great people, having my wife who really truly inspired me, having some people that I know that truly inspired me. Um, Watching that some amazing people like the Mother Teresa of the world that have given their life to in the service of the people. And I, I reflect on how the people that I truly admire, they're the people like this who are truly in service. This is the mind shift. And so that's, in a way, I would say, Mo, it has nothing to do with business development. Yeah. It is far deeper than this. And that's the secret of living. Yeah. So that's, that's for me the, the reason behind that. Well, I love that the secret of living is giving. And I'll tell you, um, it's funny what I've seen happen is people go through our programs and they have that mindset shift. Of course, then we teach them exactly how you execute it. You know, like people buy into what they help create, the science behind that called the IKEA effect. How do you do that specifically when you work with a client in four steps, all that stuff we teach. Um, but it's but but it's the mindset shift that enables all of it. So let's do this next. So I wrote down three things that I've learned from you. Some of this is in your book, some of it's in our interactions. And I want to describe each of these three things and then rapid fire, I want you to tell how somebody can apply that in their business development world. So I'm putting you on the spot. I didn't didn't prepare you for this, didn't see this coming. Let's but, go. So I'll give a concept, you say, here's how you use it. And specifically in business development, concept, use it, concept, use it. Okay, here's the first one. Your concept around ideal week is fantastic. and. And it's it, and I think there's a version of that 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 could be deployed around business development to plan for time or have some kind of cadence in planning for time where you're going to do one of three things, either plan your strategies around business development or specifically block time to move opportunities forward or third thing, but specifically block time to invest in your most important relationships. So that's just a high level. But how would you say somebody should think about planning their ideal week for business development in perpetuity? How would that work? Good. So I would actually go uh, uh, one step backward. And the step backward, I would say, before you plan your ideal week, you need to know what you want to put in this ideal week. And so the step backward, I would say, ask yourself in business development. Every quarter, ask yourself this simple question. What are the two or three things that if I really focus on this quarter 
and they're things which are, they're not the thing the most pressing. They're not the BAU that you normally do. Yep. But one of the two or three things that if you really focus on this quarter will have a significant impact long term on your performance and the performance of your business. And so when I ask this question in the context of business development, typically the answer I get more are relationship building with my raving fan or my potential fan. Yep. Networking and prospecting the right industry. Developing myself, learning. We forget always about that, how important it is, growth. Developing my team. I might be a sales director and I have people to develop. These are the things that are not urgent. These are the things that are not the business as usual. I want you to first to think about, and every quarter choose two or three of those that you say, they're the thing that I would normally put on the back burner. They're the thing that I would normally get eaten by the day to day. But if I was to really protect them, that's going to have an, an impact significant long term. That's perfect. Number one. Yeah, go. Number two is then you ask yourself to do justice to those two or three things. How much time do I need to protect every day or every week? Now, it might, it might be that you just said, I need to make sure that I protect only an hour per day is already great. Typically, I find people need to protect an hour to an hour and a half per day, sometimes two hours. Say, hey, to do justice to those, if I protect an hour and a half per day or even an hour per day, that'd be great. Then you do your ideal week. Then you go in your calendar and you block it and you call it, I call it big rock time. You protect it and you block a recurrent meeting with yourself every day, let's say from nine to 10 that you call big rock time forever. And you have a rule, which is the more rule. And the more rule is, you can move this meeting with yourself, but you can't delete it. MDD, move, yep. I, I, you know, one of your uh, video, uh, one of your blog, yep. MDD. That's my suggestion. Yeah, I like that a lot. And that MDD has saved me because I used to think, oh, I'll deal with the thing in four, mo- four weeks from now. I don't know what it is. So I would like pack my calendar and I wouldn't have that that time. So I created blocks of time called it MDD. There's lots of people in my calendar. They can move that around that day, but it can't be deleted. And once you, once you get to where the day's full, nothing else can go in there unless it's like ridiculously urgent. Okay. So that's thing one. Thing two, this is a little bit from the side, but everybody's got business development tasks. You know, people go through our MIT process, three things a week that are going to move an opportunity or relationship forward, planning like that. There's all kinds of BD tasks that are in addition to that. How how do you recommend somebody aligning the tasks they have to do around relationship or opportunity management and their calendar, the time it will take to do it? So tell me about that. Well, the way I do it is there's two different kind of tasks for me on, on this one. One, there are regular like tasks that you know happen every day. So every day I have in my ideal week a time that I call my business development time. It's half an hour every single day. Okay. And this is the time where the way I work on this is I have a lot of little small tasks to do. It could be sending a quick email to someone. It could be follow up. So I've sent a proposal to someone. I need to follow up. Hey, I've just sent you this. Have you had the time to check it? Or can I help you with this? Or there's a lot of little things like that. When you're in business development, you'll find that you have a lot of little things. Yeah. And so the way I do this is I personally use Outlook Task for this. So let me explain clearly. Very ba- Let's be very practical down to us. I really like using Outlook task, but I only use Outlook task for the quick task. And the way I do is I would, let's say, send an email to a client with a proposal. But as soon as I've sent this email, I would go in my sent in Outlook, take the task, and you can transform when you drag and drop, you can transform uh, an email into a task. And so I would take this email, literally drag it into the task box, it become a task with all the email inside. And I would put um, follow more on the proposal as a subject. And I've sent the email today, I'll say, hey, I'm gonna give Mo a week to review that. And so I'm gonna schedule it 
for the date in a week time. And the last thing I do is I have a category called business development in my task. So I categorize that as business development. And then I completely forget about this email I sent to Mo. Completely forget about it. But in a week time, when in my calendar is my half an hour business development, the thing I do is I go in my task and I organize my task by category and I have a category called business development. Yep. And I look at all the little things due for today. And then I just, hey, have I heard from Mo? Yes, I have. I don't need to call. Or no, I haven't. Hey, Mo, by the way, do you still need my help in this? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. And so, first of all, there's a real discipline of all those little things. Now, they're two minutes, but they're very important. And so I have blocked that in my calendar as a, and I have a system that says, I don't need to keep that in my brain. My Outlook task lists them and my Outlook calendar tells me when it's supposed to be done. And then the other one is the task which is a little bit more meaty. I need to spend some time building this document. I need to spend some time reviewing this client. I need to do an account plan for this client. They are the same that the Big Rock time. It's an MDD. It's a meeting with, it's a really, really important concept. Meeting with yourself. Your calendar should be full of meeting with yourself. Why do we have so little respect for time with ourselves? I don't care if it's a, a meeting is with yourself or someone else. I care about the four words we spoke about earlier. What impact long term? You can have a meeting with yourself that has going to have a huge impact and a meeting with someone else, you're going to have little impact. Which one should you respect? Yep, I like this. That's, that's my logic. I does that make it. sense, Mo? It does. And you taught me, I didn't even know, I think, well, I think I read this in your book, actually, that you could drag an email to the calendar and it just creates space. You can drag it to the task and it creates the task. I didn't even know that in Outlook. I'm in Outlook all the time. So I loved it. I loved your advice there. And it's just super practical. And then, of course, how you're linking your to-dos with your calendar. Okay, last one. We're bumping up against time limits on this, so we have to go fast. But I'm going to try to throw you a zinger. This is that final okay. question where you try to stump the expert. Try to catch it. All right, here we go. How do you say no? Request comes ah. in. It's, it doesn't align with what impact long term. You really like the person. You know you can help them, but it's not going to align. Uh, how do you say no? So it's interesting because a lot of time people say, say to me, oh, Cyril, I can't say no. You know, I want to be called corporate citizen and so on. And I say, you are fooling yourself. Because you say no all the time. Mo, whenever you say yes to something, you say no to many other things. So the people that say, I can't say no, you are completely fooling yourself. You do say no all the time. If you say yes to something and you're going to spend an hour on this, this is an hour that you've said no to many other things. So first of all, you do say no all the time, whether you're conscious or not at all. Okay. So how do I suggest you say no? Three suggestions. My first one is pause. Someone asks you to do something, just pause. You could even say to the person, look, if they call you on the spot, call you and say, hey, can you do this? Pause. And it's absolutely right to say to the person, I just need to check my calendar. Can I call you back in two minutes? You don't check your calendar. You check your brain. And you ask yourself, now, my way of doing it is I put two pictures in my mind. One is a picture of where I want a vision, where I want to take my business. The other one is a picture of my wife and my kids. And I ask myself, how is that going to be the detriment to one of those? Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to say no. It means that I can either say no or set the parameter. I can only give you this. And then I call back the person. So my first advice is pause. My second advice is it's called hell yeah or no. And it's mm -hmm. not from me. There's a guy called Derek Sivers. Derek Sivers. He's yep. an entrepreneur. Yeah, Derek yep. Sivers. He's, he's done a great TED talk called hell yeah or no. And it's logic. If someone comes to you and they say, hey, can you do this? If your first reaction is like, hell yeah. So I've just received an email today from one of my biggest clients to say, we've got this big meeting in Miami, um, you know, and we want you to be one of the guest speakers and so on. And look at that. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I've got the time and so on. And we're like, hell yeah, I want to do that. That's a hell yeah. 
This is no brainer. Everything else might be a no or a no but. Okay. My third advice is use the word because. There's really interesting research on when we say no. If you just give it a reason, it doesn't matter if it's a good reason, but if you use the word because, hey, I can't help you right now on that because, because I'm working on another project, because blah, blah, blah. Just the word they use because, that's going to help a lot. But the main mentality mo is this. You say no all the time. Do it consciously. That's all. Oh, man, that was great. Mic drop moment. That's the end. No comments. We're moving on. That was really, really good. So um, where should people go if they want to get more Surreal Papon? Where, where should they go if they want to dig into your content? Um, they should fly to Australia, to Sydney. I live in a town called GY and they had to get more Surreal. No, I'm just joking. Uh, the, the best way to go is go to the website, wslb.com for worksmarterleavebetter.com. Um, on the website, they can get the weekly plan. Now, you know how we talk how important it is to prioritize and, and to organize your time. Weekly plan is such an important time. So I have done a really simple, they can download it for free, a very simple step-by-step -step how to do a weekly plan, very practical. And then they can also get access to a lot of short videos. Every two weeks, I send a video to all my clients. I've now put them online. I've got years of a library of short tips. It's nothing to do about, hey, this is work smarter, they better. Who cares about that? It is, let me give you a very simple tip about how to say no, how to organize your inbox, how to plan your time, how to organize your priorities. Super three-minute tips are done by video and writing as well. Um, that's where they can find it, wslb.com. Yeah. Fantastic. And I'm, I've downloaded that weekly planner and the how-to guide, and I get your weekly emails. Love them. So, Cyril, thanks for being on the show. Audience, follow, subscribe, whatever platform you're on. There's two videos before this, or if you listen to two audio podcasts before this, we got two more coming, and uh, I can't wait to have you on the show again, Cyril. Here they come, everybody. There's two more episodes on their way. Thanks, Cyril. Looking forward. Hey, everybody. It's Mo Bunnell, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. I'm back with Cyril Papon. I am having a blast. And uh, that last episode, Cyril, was one of the best that I've ever recorded with anybody. So everybody, if you didn't wow. catch that one yet, it was really, really good. Okay, on this one, this this episode, this is our fourth out of five episodes in the entire season. This particular question that we kick off this fourth episode every time ends up turning into something inspirational. So feel free to tell a full story here and really get into it, Cyril. You're a great storyteller. So here it is. Tell me of a business development story that you're very proud of. It's interesting because what I'm very proud of in this one, it's not the business development, it's the relationship. Mm. Um, many years ago, I got in contact with a one of the largest consulting firm in the world and met one of their partner in Sydney. We got along really well. Uh, he asked me to work with some of his colleagues. We did a training. The training went really well. And then he's like, man, that's going to be really useful to my other colleagues around the world, but nothing was really happening. And then he had a, he had an idea. Say, hey, so we've got this big worldwide meeting that's happening in Barcelona. Would you, would you come? Would you fly just to do a session? Just short session, an hour, an hour and a half session. And I'm like, yeah, great, I'll fly. How many people should I expect in this session? And he said, look, you know, we've got a few sessions in parallel, you'll be one of them, so I think you should have about 40, 50 people. So I'm really excited, prepare the session, fly the day before, get to Barcelona. I also love Barcelona. I've got a few very close friends, if not some of my best friends living there. It was great, I loved it. And then I get to the session, I think it started at 9.30 in the morning, and there's five people in the room. I'm like, I have flown 20,000 K from Sydney to Barcelona to present to five people. I'm there, I'm going to do it, but it's mad. Now, I discovered the culture of this company where everyone was late. There were 70 seats. Within 10 minutes, there was 120 people in a room. Every seat was filled. People were standing, sitting. It was just mad. 
absolutely mad. The topic of work smarter, live better really raised an interest. And I had one of those, I don't know, spur of the moment idea. The day before, I'm in Barcelona, I'm like, oh, I'm here to test a little bit if that could become a big client. And I'm in discussion with their L&D and HR department. So it'd be good to get a bit of testimonial. So I remember going to a library or a, a, a shop in Barcelona, trying to explain how you get some, the small card, the Bristol cards, finally managed to buy some Bristol cards and put one Bristol card under every chair. And at the end of the, the session, I said, look, I've just put a little Bristol card under your, chair, uh, under your seat. Can you write three things? Your name, one feedback about the session, and if yes or no, this would be of interest as a training. And I had the okay from l and for this, so I cleared that with l and And Mo, I thought to myself, hey, they've got about a thousand leaders around the world. If I get a 20% interest, I've got a business case. We're good. 100%. Hundred percent rate, right? Great session. Well, the best session we had this week. Um, oh, when are you coming to New York? When are you coming to to Atlanta? When are you coming to New Hong Kong? It was just mad, and that was the start of a great relationship. But what happened was even better. I had got a really amazing relationship with the L and D department, and we started working together. And you know, in your book, this is great advice about how uh, involving people to help you to create it, that they help to create it. Yep. And we had this real relationship with this L&D department where we would sit down every year, review what we had done and really think, how can we do it better next week, next year, yep. I'm sorry. Yep. And they would bring a lot of ideas and they would challenge me and I would challenge them. And it was a real working discussion. And that created a trust and a relationship that eight years down the track is still really strong and it's probably one of my my most favorite clients i work with a lot of clients but my favorite because of this trust and relationship this is for me the best business open story because it's not about business open it's about people yeah i love it well and i know i think i know who you're talking about and i love working with the same organization so we bond on that because the, the favoritism is is high on both of our parts because of their culture. Um, so so he, this is where this question set goes next. Love the background, but this episode's meant to be inspirational. It's meant to dig deep and it's meant to show that, you know, people can accomplish more than they think they could. Along the surface, that sounds like, oh, it was easy. It was a great idea. Put the cards under the chairs. Maybe I can do that. But there's something deeper. What did you personally do that you're so proud of? in that like where where well I'll just leave it at that what did you what did you personally do what was the action you took that maybe you were scared of or that stretched you out your comfort zone or what did you personally do in that story that that you're quite proud of so there's a few things yes it was putting yourself out of the comfort zone at the beginning I'm not a speaker um, I'm a trainer I was doing one-on-one -on -one, small group and so on being in front of an audience and this was a really high audience. Yeah. Uh, yep. The speaker before me for this audience was uh, one of the Nobel Prize winner. So, I, you know, you are you're speaking after one of the Nobel Prize winner uh, on a productivity topic in front of super busy executive. I was completely out of my comfort zone on the other side of the world. Yeah. I think preparation is the first thing. Um, for a, people don't realize even today for a one hour speech, and I know my stuff upside down, I've trained so many people and made so many speeches. Even for an hour speech, they will, I'll spend two, three, four hours just preparing, just one hour speech. And this first one, I probably spent 20 hours preparing, if not more, if yeah. not more. And so the first thing I'm really proud is I took it really seriously and um, and there was a lot of prep into it. And I researched, I spoke to people and so on. Yeah, you keep going. The second thing, Mo, is 
there's a real value in me. I talk about value, it's a very strong word for me. It's about continuous improvement, thriving to improve all the time. And I think this client felt, and a lot of my clients feel that, and that I'm not saying, hey, this is the way it needs to be done like this. They say, hey, I've got some real expertise in what I'm doing, built over the last 16 years of doing it, but it can always improve. And I'd love your feedback about how we can improve and let's work in real partnership. And there's this notion of, but there are a few fundamentals that I will keep. It needs to be practical. So people ask me, hey, can you do the training that you do in four months? Can you do it in two days in a workshop? And I say, no, because I don't believe in it. And so there's some fundamental that I'm really anchor, but there's a real mentality about continuous improvement. And I think it is anchoring me, how can I do better in my in my content, in my approach, in my relationship, and I think that uh, was a key of success here. Yeah, I really like that. And I think what's interesting about your story is, you know, the fact that you were way outside your comfort zone in another part of the world, giving a speech and you know following somebody who it's really high stakes in the time period when you hadn't done a lot of that before is not as much as you've done now, obviously. And that that you took it so seriously, you did the preparation. You were always improving and then you got the result you got. That's like, that's what life, life is about, you know, stretching outside your comfort zone, doing something that's on the edge of what's possible that you think you can do, or maybe you're not quite sure. You put yourself out there and you crushed it and a great result happened that has even gotten better with time. That's a cool story. So what, uh, finish with this, what's your advice to somebody that, um, Maybe they've been hesitating. Maybe they've been in their comfort zone for a while. Maybe they haven't stretched and done something that's, that, that makes them feel uncomfortable. What's your advice to somebody like that and how they can strive to, to push themselves a little bit more? Well, it come back to some of the things we discussed a bit earlier, Mo, in one of the pre- previous episodes, which is, uh, you know, I've got this approach that I call Think Quarterly, Plan Weekly, Act Daily. And every quarter, I choose two or three priorities that are going to push me a little bit out of my comfort zone. And the way I explain this to leaders is to say, the day-to-day will happen, the operation will happen, you know, you've got all your meeting organized, you've got your client, even your client meeting organized, and so a lot of things will happen. But choose every quarter, maybe one, maybe two, maximum three, between one and three things that are going to push yourself out of your comfort zone that you would normally always procrastinate on and say, I know I should do this, but I, I've got, I'm not, it's not urgent, I'll do it later. And choose just one or two, just one or two. And it could be, so for example, for me, uh, one thing that a few years ago I started, started doing is I need to improve my speaking skills. And I went to be trained by uh, one of the greatest speakers here in Australia completely took me out of my comfort zone. And then I had to apply it and being a speech and being completely taken out of my comfort zone. Then we moved to the pandemic. And I thought, oh, we're gonna have to deliver things online. What do I need to do? I found an ex-film director who trained me and my team how to be better on camera. I found an IT expert who completely changed my settings. Every time, so the first time I had to use the camera and microphone and new settings and organizing things, the first time I had to be like an actor on camera, completely taking my comfort zone. So my advice is every quarter, choose one or two things like this. That's going to help you, take you out of your comfort zone, but it's going to push the dial further. That's going to, ha- that's going to really have an impact long term on you. Choose one and then protect time every single week. Every week it needs to be protected and just do it. Yeah, that's my that's my suggestion. I love it. I love it. And and the the other thing I I noticed that you did there is you not only picked the priority but you found a worldwide expert to guide you through it so that they were a step ahead of you that they that you accelerated the learning too and I think that's that's important. So, hey, let's close with this awesome episode. Love the inspiration and love the practical advice at the end. Where should people go to get more surreal papon? Um, so the best one is to go to the website. I've got a website called WSLB.com, which is for work smarter, leave better.com. So go to WSLB.com. On the website, uh, you'll find the Swiki plan that I talk about. This is a time where you actually plan and protect those kind of thing in your calendar. 
It's a really simple step-by-step -step weekly plan, very practical. They'll find uh, heaps of small videos. I have been shooting really practic practical advice, three, four minutes. They're really one simple advice that I try to give every two weeks to all the people that I have trained, that we've worked with in our world, and all that is on the website. That's where they can find all this information. I love it. I love it. WSLB.com. Everybody, I'm a subscriber to Cyril's weekly or bi-weekly emails. Absolutely love getting those videos and that weekly planner is killer. So follow, subscribe to the show, everybody. Set up those notifications so it'll go bonkers when new episodes come out because we've got one more coming up with Cyril right after this one. Thanks, Cyril. Thanks, Mo. Hey, everybody. Mo Bunnell here, your host at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. Man, it's the last of five episodes with Cyril Papon. I've had so much fun with you. Um, we're coming at this from opposite sides of the globe, different hemispheres, and we're merging our minds to hopefully add some value to the audience. So last of five episodes, everybody, if you haven't caught the four before this, all of them have been just A+. In this one, Cyril, I'm, I'm real curious at how you answer this. If you could record a, bit, a, a video and send it back to your younger self, specifically around business development, growth skills, things like that, what would you say? I love this question because it's a bit like knowing what you know now, what would you have done differently? And it's the same thing. I'm really love, I think it's a really interesting question. Um, I would talk to me about a restaurant called L'Entrecôte. There's a restaurant in Paris called L'Entrecôte. My parents, when they were dating, used to go to that restaurant. It's actually called L'Entrecôte slash Le Relais de Venise. If you go to Paris, do not miss this one. L'Entrecôte slash Le Relais de Venise. If you go to the restaurant, you sit down and you don't have any menu. They only ask you one question. How do you want it cooked? That's the only question they ask. And you decide if you want, you know, bien cuit, à point, medium, uh, you know, bleu. You, know, you decide your, your cooking steak. Then they start with a very simple but really fresh salad with walnuts. And then they bring the most beautiful entrecote, which is ribeye. It's like a few, few ribeye fillets with beautiful French fries and this sauce that is their secret. And they've been doing that for, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 years, if not more. You can't book that restaurant. You have to queue. Now, let me tell you, Paris in winter, it's freezing. And you can't queue inside. You have to queue outside the restaurant. Every evening, there's half an hour queue. People are ready to queue for half an hour to get into that restaurant. My advice to myself is be like Lanco Court. What is what are they doing the well? They do one thing, which is this ribeye, this entrecote. And they're the best in the world to do it. But they are the master of one trade. Don't be a jack of all trade. Choose the thing that you're really passionate and become really good at it rather than trying to disperse yourself in many directions. Follow your passion, follow your heart, and become the expert in that area. That would be my first advice. Yeah, go ahead. Do you have more? Yeah, I was going to give a second one. Well, let, hold second, on. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, go, go, let's go, dig go, into go, the go, first go. one, and we'll, we'll come back yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because yeah. I think it'll be better for the audience. I love that. I have so much... I just have so much respect for people who dedicate their life to one thing. Um, there's an old saying that, that I read somewhere, excellence is boring. Excellence is boring. The fact that you get up every day and you do that one thing again, that you've got habits, that you, that you focus on the same things, that's what builds expertise. That's what builds a clientele. That's what builds impact is really having a deep expertise that becomes in demand around the world. And, um, I think of people like in the in the U.S. as we record this, um, the the NCAA or the the men's college basketball tournament is happening. It's the the march to the Final Four, 
and a guy named Mike Krzyzewski, you know, I'm sure that you hear some of this stuff down under, but he's been at Duke, I think, for like coaching the same basketball team for like 44 years. I might get it wrong, but he's number one in wins all time. He's he's almost made a it almost had a hundred NCAA tournament wins. Most coaches don't even get to a hundred wins. He's had a hundred tournament wins, 1,200 wins in total, and he's dedicated his life to not only one craft but one team. I'm sure there was times he could have got paid double to go somewhere else. He stuck to doing that one thing in that one city for that one program. And now that he's finishing, the respect that people have for him personally, not only because he's done great, but I think also because he dedicated his entire life basically to one thing. And I just think it's really impressive. And I think there's a lot of joy to that if you can embrace the, the excellence and boring idea and get up every day and learn your craft a little bit more. So anyway, give me some thoughts on that and move to your second. Yes, and the the chance that you and I have and those people have is we have found a passion. Now, it took me a while to find my passion. Yep. I'm a frustrated doctor. My mom is a doctor, my dad is a doctor, and I wanted to be a doctor, but unfortunately, I was really good at school, and the, 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 the royal way in France is science. And so everyone said, I know you want to be a doctor, but you're so good at school. You need to go and do a university in science and math and so on, which is what I did. And I became an engineer. And when I became an engineer, I'm like, now I've graduated, I've become an engineer, but I don't want to be, become an engineer. So I've done yeah. it because I was being told to do it. Yeah. I've done it really well. Um, I did my, you know, there, and then I did an MBA and I started changing completely a direction. And it took me a while. And I think I'm doing work smarterly better because I'm a frustrated doctor. I think deep inside, I, there's a real willingness to help, to serve people. And yeah. so I can't help them as a doctor. I will help them as a, hey, I'm going to completely change your life by changing your work habits. But I'm lucky because at least after a while, I found my passion. I find something that I absolutely love doing it. That give me this buzz. Okay, And then... I become la lentre court. I do one thing. People have asked me, hey, you've got so many clients, you should sell this and you should sell this and you should do this and say, no, no, no. I do one thing, I do well. I'm not interested in the rest. I'd much rather say, hey, if you want to do this, go and see Mo. If you want to do this, go and see Joe. Do you want to yep. do this, go yep. and see uh, Sylvie. But that's my expertise. Yep. Be like lentre court. Both of us have a highly creative mind. Like we love inventing things. But I really, the business bundle idea group really took off when I didn't try to do other things other than business development. In the very beginning, we do all kinds of strategy work and all kinds of other stuff, but it's when we narrowed it in to say, no, no, we train and coach business development and that's it. Now, what I found is I can still be creative. There's a hundred percent things I can be creative, but they're within that lane. And that is, a, yes. I'll dedicate the rest of my life to that lane because it satisfies three things. And I think this is the key. It, we're, we're, I'm passionate about it. You're passionate about work smarter, live better. The market will pay a premium rate for this because we deliver value to high-end executives. Same thing with work, work smarter, live better. Um, and we're decent at it. We're pretty good at it. And if people can find something, it, it just keeps searching till you find something that you you click on all three of those things. That's when you really can just dedicate and double down and do that. So, so and, and it's interesting. Yeah. In, interesting you mentioning that mode because I think. Um, it's really about this this continuous improvement, this creativity. I thought, hey, is it going to be boring? I have yeah. one area, and uh, you know, am I going to, you know, after a year or two years? He's been doing it for sixteen years. I block six hours per week at least to work on this and develop it. And I wish I had twenty. Yeah. There's so many ideas, so many things yeah. I want to improve. So many. I mean, I, I, this week I'm training one of our session to one of a client. I came out of the session, and the session actually. I called someone in my team, Josh, and I said, Josh, let's get together. I think we can do it better. I think I would change this and let's change this slide and what do you want and so on. It's nonstop yes. on one area. Yes. Nonstop. Yes. Nonstop. Yes. Yes. And, I, and you compare that, like creativity going deep on one thing to somebody who has like 17 projects going on. Well, they can be creative too, but they're just not making meaningful progress on any of this. No. So, okay. Back to you, your second thing you were going to, you were going to bring up. The second thing I would say is never stop learning. We spoke about that a bit in one yep. of the, uh, the previous um, interview. Uh, but it, uh, the, the advice I would say is myself is um, never stop learning. Never, ever stop learning. I love the quote from Gandhi. 
Live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. And so I would say, hey, learning is continuous. Every day block time to read books, to develop yourself. Every quarter attend a new training. Have a few great mentors that you link with. Um, surround yourself with the right community. Learn, learn, learn. Never stop learning. I think that is the end of our series right there. <laughs> it's perfect. Cyril, people are going to want to get more of you. They're going to want to download tools you've got, get videos, do something. Maybe you have both of those? I do. So um, the best way to go to go there is to go to WSLB.com. So it's a website, WSLB for work smarter, leave better. Dot com. So if they go on WSLB.com, they can download. We have the wiki plan. It's a really simple tool that they can download to organize, to plan, to plan much better. Very practical. I'm super practical. Done to a step one, step two, step three. Very simple. And then I, I record every two weeks a video for all my clients. Short, one tip, one advice about any you know topic that we're touching about. It goes from email management, to planning your time, to organizing your priority, to meeting management, to energy management. There's so many different topics yep. and they can find that on the, on the website. Awesome. WSLB.com, everybody. I'm a subscriber to Searle's email list. Love the videos that come every other week. Love that weekly planner and that template. And then your book, Work Smarter, Live Better, is fantastic too. So Cyril, thanks for being on the show. This has just been fantastic, and uh, I just I just can't say enough. It's been great. Thank you. It, it's been my pleasure, and uh, liaising with you and learning from you, Mo, is actually a, a real privilege, and I'm really grateful for all what you're bringing to me as well. So thank you so much. You know it. Gosh darn it, you get the last word. I feel the same about you. There, I got the last <laughs> word. All right, that's it. We're over. <laughs> See all right, thanks. See you.